Hey everyone, Pete Calandra here. Today's video is the first of three videos where I'll be taking a deeper look into Spitfire Audio's Abbey Road 2 Iconic Strings. On today's video, we'll be covering the Ensemble Short Articulations. For the rest of the library, please check the links in the description box below after this video has come out. They'll all be there. I've got chapters in the description box also, so you can easily navigate through this video. If you like this video, give a thumbs up for more content, please subscribe, and to be notified, ring that bell. Thanks for watching, and let's get right into it. So for the first short articulation with ensembles, we'll be talking about spiccatissimo. Okay, let's take a look at our mic position. And for this one, I'm using LCR1. We've got just a little bit of the large hall in there. This is something I've just put together, and let's take a listen. Let's take a listen to that and let me bring all of the velocities for this down. Let's make it even softer. It's really good. One thing is that the short spiccatos in the mid section, in this area here, when you're in the mid mid range or a little above middle C, they have a like spiky little attack to them, no matter how you play. And I'm wondering if that's the blend of the viola in there. But it still sounds really good. Let's do something else here. Let's see. Let's take this two measure phrase and let's do a crescendo. So I want to bring this up and down and use my pencil tool and we'll just use a line and we'll draw in a long crescendo and see what that sounds like from softest all the way right up to the loudest. Let's take a listen to those two measures. Interesting. It's got a really good dynamic range. Not super, super soft, but there are other articulations. They've got the brushed for that. Let's uh, take a listen to that with X1, which is really close, and we'll turn this off, and we'll turn down the large hall. Yeah, that's really great for punching through a mix. Nice and tight and clean. And then we can play around with your with your different reverbs. So let's do studio plate. 2.5 seconds and we'll add a little bit more of that. We'll take a listen to that last bit again from right here. Well, that was a bit too much. Here we go. Let's try this. Thank you. 
Yeah, some of those really high velocity, really punchy, really cut through, really biting. Very useful to cut through a mix. Our next articulation is spiccato. Let's see what mic position. So this is LCR2. So that's with our Chandler Red 47 in Omni mics in LCR formation. And I've actually brought out the spread here that it's a little wider than normal. Let's take a listen to this. You could tell that that's not quite as punchy as the spiccato, and there's a little bit longer articulation. Sounds pretty good. I like that. Let's change mic positions. Let's try the vintage with the ADT on it and see what that sounds like. And maybe add just a little bit more of the large hall. Very useful sound. Let's move on to our ensemble staccato, I believe. And again, I've not played around with changing the ranges of the multi-voice. I've just left it at the factory default. Let's do this and let's look at the CPU and disk and everything and see how that's going with this particular patch. So let's just play it and then we'll talk about the mic positioning. So you could see that the CPU got up to about 20% a few times. I have a 2019 Mac Pro. I think I've got the 16 core and I've got 256 gigs of RAM. So you can make your own judgment from that. But something like this can be frozen or committed once you've written it. So there are ways to save CPU cycles. Let's bring these way down and let's see what a soft dynamic range will do. Here we go. You can really hear the stereo spread if you're listening with headphones on that. These are all minor seventh chords here at the beginning, and this voicing is drop two and four. So in other words, if I were to take this and this and pop those up an octave, you'll see that C, E flat, G, and B flat. So if the second voice from the top is the G, and the fourth voice from the top is the C. And we drop those down an octave, and we get these really nice Stan Kenton-esque chord voicings. I want to play around with the dynamics range. So let's draw in some extreme dynamics here just as a test, right? And like that. Okay, let's take it from here. A good dynamic range, but this is, doesn't have that really spiky bit. For that, you would use the spiccatissimo, right? It's in there. All of this stuff, you think of the context as to how you're going to write and how you're going to employ these samples in your writing. You want something that's really spiky, you'll do the ensemble spiccato. And if you want to have this with the spikiness, what you could do is copy the soprano voice and pop it in onto the spiccato and layer it that way with the st staccato here so that the top voice has the spikiness and added on to this particular passage and the other three or four voices have just the regular staccato. So there are, are ways around doing stuff, but again, context is key with this work. Let's take a listen to Marcato. Actually, before we do, let's take a look at our mic positioning. So just mix one and I've got large hall and about 50%. Let's move it down to exactly 50%. And then let's take a listen to this.
Let's stop that for a second and make it a little bit drier. There's a little bit too much reverb on that. Not a little bit, this way too much. Let's play it again. It's interesting here because I talk about context, right? So with this type of a piece, you won't be using marcato for some of these really fast things, right? That you'd use staccato or staccatissimo. Again, context, right? They don't sound great doing that. That's not what they're meant to do, right? But you can hear in a few of these spots here, like at the very beginning, that's kind of a great sound. Here, let's take a listen. Here, let me do a quick edit here and I'll speed this up and then we'll listen to a multiple articulation passage. Okay, mixed articulations, here we go. All right, so you could see that by putting the articulations in the context that they were meant for, that you can get a really wide variety of sounds here. I think that this probably should be up here, and maybe these couple of things right in this area should be down in the staccato instead of the spiccato. But it really does make a difference. So that's just something I was talking about, context. All right, let's take a listen to our last articulation which is pizzicato and let's see what our mic positioning is for this so we've got large hall let's bring that down a little bit so i'm using mix two which is a little bit more of the room yes yeah, so we can bring this down even more probably so i played this in free time with no click so we're just going to look at the midi notes here here we go Yeah, very nice sound. Again, as with the longs, there is no Bartok pits in the ensemble shorts or in the individual articulations, which I think is an oversight that I hope that they will rectify at some point with an update. Spitfire is very good with updates. Let's do this and let's bring our dynamics way down and then we'll bring them way up. Cute. What I think I'd like to do is try that with none of the external reverb on. Let's turn that way off. And we're just going to be listening to right, right here. 
mixed to a mix with more room formed of the close ribbons, LCR2, stereo mid, and ambience. Here we go. We should get a really good sense of the actual sound here. And maybe we'll bring the dynamics up a little higher than we had them before. It's good. You can hear artifacts like people's fingers moving on the strings and a couple of other things, but they're not overly bearing and in your face. I think they just add to the realism. I'm going to bring up the dynamics even more. So we've sort of limited some of these top ones, but we'll take a listen to this. It'll give us a good idea of the range. Here we go. Let's change the tempo on this and make it a little bit more zany. Okay, and that brings us to the end of this video. That's a detailed look at the Ensemble Short Articulations for Spitfire Audio's Abbey Road 2 Iconic Strings Library. My own opinion is that this is an excellent library and I will certainly be making use of it in my future productions. I do have a wish list though that they would add Colenio and Bartok Pitts in a future update. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Please leave any comments or questions below. Please like, subscribe, share, do all that stuff. Again, I've been Pete Calandra. Thank you one more time, and I'll catch you on the next one.